We help uh, insurers with a number of sort of the core processes of insurance. So we help with underwriting. We help with uh, claims, including suppressing fraud and claims. We help the uh, carriers to place their reinsurance uh, contracts and also anticipate the kinds of things that are maybe a little more black swanish uh, in the uh, in the experience of an insurance company. So major events, hurricanes, earthquakes. So we predict those. So you are doing actuarial type of stuff too. It started out that way. Um, a lot of a lot of the the movement in insurance analytics over the last decade or so has actually been towards sort of more modern forms of uh, data analytics, big data methodologies, for example. But yeah, we have quite a few actuaries too to help make it all sensible for insurance companies. Can you give us an example of how you're using big data or how big data has changed how you assess risk for the insurance industry? Sure. So uh, one example uh, among many of, uh, uh, of what we do is if you were to file a claim on your homeowner's insurance policy, as soon as it be officially becomes a claim inside of the system of your insurance company, they will abstract the data uh, and send it to us. And this is all a machine-to-machine -machine, uh, uh, transaction where they give us the abstract of uh, the data inside your claim. And then what we do is in the context over, uh, of over a billion claims, we essentially analyze that claim to figure out whether or not uh, it is likely that there is some form of incipient fraud that's going on here as the claimant fraudulent is the particular claim how, fraudulent. How do you know that? that? Yeah. Okay. How does that work? So basically, uh, we're looking for patterns. So uh, it could be, for example, that uh, uh, somebody who is the same individual but is actually identified differently has taken out insurance multiple times against the same asset. Uh, and then now they've actually fraudulently, fraudulently claimed uh, that something has happened to that asset. So if I file as Becky Quick instead of Rebecca Quick, exactly, or you would AKAs. do both of those, you might have multiple social, social security numbers. And, and fraud is a network problem. And so one of the reasons why we can add value for our customers is market shares in the insurance industry are fairly low. So any one insurer looking at their own experience is only seeing a fraction of what's going on. But if we were all trying to defraud insurance companies, we wouldn't hit just one. Yeah. We would hit many of them. We can see that whole pattern because we're getting well over 90% of all the claims. Scott, I, you know, I actually remember shortly after the IPO, uh, I remember writing about uh, the company and it was characterized because it used to be an industry consortium. Right, the insurance industry kind of owned this as a collective uh, thing, and it was considered, oh, well, this is kind of like Visa, right? The banks used to own Visa, and now it's this kind of for-profit thing, uh, all this value in the install base and the processing. I'm wondering if the historical data that you seem to have um, still maintains its value, right? Because you kind of house a lot of the industry's historical experience. Right. Yeah, it still does. And actually, you know, and this this is an excellent point. I, I get into this discussion a lot. There's. There's one point of view about where the modern world is going, which is that in a world which is hyper-connected and where you have a lot of machine learning, uh, basically all nodes in the network uh, are, are communicating with one another and the machine will tell you what the data means. And that is fundamentally not the case when you do business the way we do it, which is uh, our customers are businesses and the source of our, uh, most of our proprietary content comes from businesses. And I would say in the 17 years that I've been with the company, if anything, CEOs have become more persuaded of the value of their data. And so there is still the opportunity to have content uh, as an advantage and as a differentiator. And we find that you know, the analyses that we do, there is substantial lift based upon the proprietary content. How do you have. price information? How do you price your services? So we're, we're, we're pricing to value. So base, and and we, don't sell, we don't sell data. Basically, we do three things. We put together unique data sets. We analyze them using, you know, very uh, uh, fluid uh, analytic methods. How about this? How do you price knowledge? I can price a car because I know what the components ultimately cost. I pay my workers. Right. I ship it. I need a margin. Right. How do you so, price knowledge? So the third layer, I just wanted to uh, make the point, is decision support software that helps deliver the data and the analysis into our customers' uh, world in a way that it's consumable. We price to value. So we know what business problems they're trying to solve and we're aware of the amount of value that our solutions provide and we price according to that. So you do business for a number with uh, a number of insurance companies. Let's say company A sends you data, company B sends you data. Do you then use all of that data in aggregate to provide company C for instance with a risk assessment on on me cuz I might have claimed through a different insurance company. That's right. Yep, so uh, we so we would be aggregating data from substantially all of the players in the markets that we serve, which would be insurance, would also be re retail financial banking, 
uh, and the global energy uh, complex. But in all cases, we're gathering data from all players, but creating more or less industry standard solutions that, that everybody can make use of as they try to so interpret how is my them data? We would have, we would probably have some you know of your data. My, you know it's me. Well, <laughs> that's, if we had enough time, we could, we could go into it. But basically, in the, in the modern world, because we have to keep the data secure, one of the options that we have is to go well beyond sort of the standard ways of trying to keep data secure, which is encryption, which, you know, most people think about. There's a, there's a, there's a different level, uh, which is um, that, that we, can, we can actually tokenize the data so that Think of it as the boundary of our data and the outside world. When the data hit that boundary, we actually hash it up as it lands mm -hmm. inside of our data set. So actually your name, your address it's, would not show right. up, would literally not be sitting inside of our, our data sets uh, at rest, even though we know how we tokenize it and therefore we can, we can reverse the process.